Hello everyone. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So how are you all managing with the lockdown on this very, very strange Easter that we find ourselves in the midst of? I hope you're doing okay. If there's anything that I can do uh, to be helpful, if you want a listening ear, if you just want a blether, if you're needing a prescription collected and delivered, get in touch. Let me know how I can be of help. Happy to do what I can as I can. Now today, or whenever you're watching, whenever you watch this, because we're in this strange virtual world now of online worship, um, we're thinking about the resurrection account according to John's Gospel, John chapter 21 to 18. So let's have a wee think about that. But before we do, let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. There's a now very old philosophical question, and it goes a little bit like this. If a tree falls in a forest and no one is there, does it make a sound? Now, people have been arguing over that particular chestnut, or beech, or oak, or pine. People have been arguing about that for about 300 years now, and they still haven't come to a conclusion. In our gospel passage for today, we could ask, if a stone rolls away from a tomb in a garden and nobody's around, does it mean we have a resurrection? While all four of our Gospels have differing details about that first Easter morning, it's only in John's Gospel that we find silence and solitude seen in the lone figure of Mary of Magdala making her way to the tomb in the pre-dawn darkness. She's quite the picture of physical isolation as she heads to the garden to grieve over her beloved teacher. And when she gets there, her isolation continues. In fact, it's compounded. The grave is empty. Already feeling the heaviness of grief, what must she have felt when she saw the rock rolled away and the tomb gaping open? She hurries off. Well, more than that, she runs. She runs through the quiet streets and alleyways of the city and she goes to find Peter and the other unnamed disciple. By the time she's found them, she thinks she's got an idea of what must have happened. They, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and she doesn't know where he is. Who are they? Perhaps in the silent darkness of the night, grave robbers have taken the body. Following her statement, there's a whole lot more running. The two disciples run a great race to the tomb, leaving Mary alone once more, abandoned in their wake. The other disciple gets there first, looks in, but stops and stands at the threshold, not going in. Peter, however, does go in. He looks in at the unwrapped burial linen, and notices the odd detail of the neatly folded head wrapping. And then the other disciples and a disciple enters the tomb. Grave robbers would have just taken the body wrappings and all, so this is different. Different enough to cause the other disciple to believe, even though not fully understanding. We aren't told what Peter's thinking. They head back to where they've been staying. And meanwhile, Mary has come back, seemingly seemingly still not being given the comfort at all, uh, any comfort at all, from our two disciples in the story. So there she is. She's alone physically and emotionally, and she stands outside the empty tomb crying. Through her tears, she bends in to look at the tomb and discovers that she's alone no longer. There are two figures seated in the place where Jesus' body would have been resting. And when they ask her why she's crying, which is a bizarre question, given this conversation is taking place in a tomb, she repeats what she said to the disciples. The mysterious they have taken the body away. She doesn't know where Jesus is. And then somehow, 
Aware of another presence behind her, she turns and she's asked the very same question by the man who's standing there. Now we, as hearers of the story, know that this is Jesus. She doesn't. She's a, a mess of grief and pain and sadness and confusion and possibly outrage at the thought of grave robbers having stolen the body. It's a garden. Maybe he's the gardener. Maybe, maybe he might just know something. Well, we know he does. And so we wait to hear the fall of a penny drop in the tangled forest of thoughts that's Mary's mind. Who is it that she's looking for? And then she hears her name. This Easter, this very strange Easter, the stone of resurrection and new life has rolled away once more. And like Mary, we may want to cling to the old Jesus, to worship him and to serve him in the old ways that we were more comfortable with. But in these days of physical distancing and COVID-19, we have to let go. We have to find new ways of worshipping and serving in community while scattered. Who is it that we're looking for when we look at the gardener in the early dawn of Easter? What are we clinging on to that may not be helpful to us as we try to follow and to worship the risen Lord? Is it time to rethink our old way of being church, of being disciples? Is it time to let go of some of the things that we've clung on to? And maybe to let them go with, a, with an alleluia. Whether or not a tree may or may not fall in a forest, in this particular resurrection story, love rises up and calls us by name. For the shepherd calls his own sheep by name. We are known. While we may yet be in lockdown in the forest of fear and so many other feelings, a forest where a virus stalks and infects, even so, as a people of faith, the hope of the resurrection lives within us. If a stone rolls away from a tomb in a garden and no one is around, does it mean we have a resurrection? Yes. Yes, it does. Resurrection still happens and we still have alleluias to sing and a God to serve and people to love. Once again at Easter, Jesus presents us with a new and living way. Let's walk in it. Amen.